any better emotionally. Like, please send help. Good morning, my bestie, or good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is, whenever you're watching this video. Hello. Hi. Um, so today I will be finishing Tower of Dawn. I have about like five chapters left. It's getting oh no. Oh no. Okay, I'm back. So I'm gonna finish Tower of Dawn today, and I thought it would be interesting, I guess, to document how I feel as I read Kingdom of Ash. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna have a little cry count in the corner of how often I cry, and I'm just gonna keep you updated. I am so excited. Please join me on this lovely journey. It, it's gonna like cut to me at the end, like absolutely heartbroken and sobbing. What supposed to do now like what do I do with my life now but like I'm feeling great right now so I forgot to say this while I was filming the intro but spoiler alert like this is my thought process while reading this book as if we're besties and I'm sending you voice messages but it's just a video so enjoy we've heard from Adian slash Lysandra, a lead Rowan, like a lead Rowan, that group, Aelin, and now we're moving into Manon. So I'm in love with Fenris. Like, I think that he's going to be such like a, I don't know how to explain it. I feel like he's going to be such a great character and I'm really excited to see like where that goes. Um, I love, 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 love that Rowan is basically like tearing people apart on his way to Aelin like yes do it some more please I'm begging you I'm having a great time but also I've noticed my anxiety is really bad while I'm reading this because I'm just expecting the worst every time something happens I'm like oh what's gonna happen oh my god what's gonna happen so that's where I'm at um but I'm having a great time <laughs> live laughing and loving Yes, I have a physical copy. No, I'm not reading it. I will be reading on my Kindle because this is just easier to maintain than this. Are you kidding? Are you are you joking? That's no hard pass. Um, I'm going to sit down and I think it's like five right now. Rest of the night, I am just reading. Let's see how far I can get. Okay, I'm calling this now because they've said it so many times, like so, so many times to be like the men in the white fangs don't exist anymore. And Manon's being like, oh, we tracked them down at like the last minute when they're like in their final battle, these random men are going to show up and they're going to be the men of the white fang mountains. I'm calling it. I'm 4% in. You probably can't see that. Lorcan giving his cut up shirt to Rowan and Gabriel so that they can give it to a lead because he knows she won't take it from him. I love it. I crawled after Aelin. I love him. I love him. And tell him thank you for walking that dark path with me to the light. It had been his honor. Are you joking? This book's gonna make me cry. 7%. 7. If she's pregnant, if she's pregnant, I'm gonna be so upset. My issue isn't that she's pregnant. It's that I feel like they just met, got married, and now she's pregnant. I love Kale. I really, really love Kale. But I really, really hope that she's not pregnant because I feel like that's just... No. I was wondering when the spider was going to show up because the spider was all like, oh, I think I got his powers. I got his powers. Surprise, spider can shapeshift. I feel like Fenris is going to be like a big part in Aelin getting out of wherever the hell they're keeping her because they just mentioned again that he can leap between short distances as if he were moving from one room to another. So I think that that's gonna come in, in, into play and like he's gonna use his little bit of restraint against the blood bond with Maeve to dip. This scene with Connell and Fenris, I really thought like, okay, 
I really thought that she was just manipulating her mind to make her think that's what happened. But is he really dead? Is he? I feel like he just got introduced. I mean, we knew about him, but like he just, he just came into the game. I thought he was gonna kill Fenris and he was like, huh, psych? <laughs> what? And she thinks that Rowan's not coming for her. Which is like, just hold on, baby girl. He's on his way. Like, it's okay. He's coming. I just started thinking about that assassin from Throne of Glass that... I don't remember his name, but they were like friendly, kind of. And he was just like, oh, I'll see you later. Like, it, it was very... It, I'll see if I can like remember his name and like I'll put it on the screen somewhere when I'm editing. Hi, editing Sarah, how are you? Um, but I think I'm just getting the feeling that he's. I'm talking too much with my hands. I'm getting the feeling that he's gonna come back at some point only because he's the only person I can think of that was introduced, made it sound like he was coming back, and hasn't come back yet, if I remember correctly. His name Knox because literally I. I just recorded that and then sat down like flipped five pages and was like oh is that him I'm like I'm really proud of myself for that one I actually barely read last night like I was like I'm gonna sit down and read I'm not gonna be bothered I watched like an ungodly amount of survivor last night so not a lot of reading happened I'm on chapter 13 um, who was going to tell me that I was saying Crotion Witch and not Crocken? Because in the audiobook, it's Crocken apparently. I bought the audiobook so that I could listen to it while I'm in the car, in between going to work and stuff. But I've been pronouncing it wrong the whole time. That's great. So I only got to chapter 13. We'll see uh, how far I get today. I have never been a Dorian girly. Like, that just wasn't my vibe in the first couple books. He's starting to grow on me in this one. Just like the things that he says, I'm like, hmm, okay, okay. If the croc and witches can have mates, but not a Dorian or mates, Dorian is ruthless. Manon said, I don't want to talk. He said, shut me up then. Okay. They need Adian and Lysandra to make up already because I'm sick of it. They need to just like kiss and make up. Is there gonna be a moment where Adian like shifts? Because I feel like he would get those gifts from his dad. So I feel like there should be a scene. Like, I feel like right when it's gonna be super important, he's gonna shift. I really truly feel like the White Fang Mountains are gonna be important. I could be so wrong. Are they really, like, are they really about to like, hunker down in Annie Hill and help them. I feel like that doesn't make any sense. Maeve showing her this vision of like what her life, like making her believe that what her life was like, that whole thing was crazy. And then killing Rowan in like the dreamlike thing and then trying to gaslight her and be like, I'm not the villain. Then who is? Maeve going to retrieve this word caller to put on Aelin is making me very nervous because that is literally the only way she can get her to swear the blood oath to her. I'm not ready. Do we know what Lorcan's animal form is? Because I can't remember ever hearing about one. Unless I just completely missed it, but I feel like I should know what it is. The fact that a lead like sees the strips of cloth in his bag for the next time she gets her period Esar, Esar, Esar. Um, I'm sorry. So, her being previously entangled with Lorcan, don't like that. But also, she has these fire powers and says that she's often asked to and then cuts herself off and says it doesn't matter. As to what? What are you asked to do? Is Dorian really planning to sacrifice himself? Feel like somebody's gonna die. Somebody. I don't know who. I'm nervous. So they finally got Aelin. Um, this whole scene with her being like, take it off, take it off, take it off. 
I've seen people like make I don't want to say fan art but these like edits of that line but without somebody reading it just like I've I've seen that line a lot and I'm just like I don't know I was expecting it to hit a little bit more than it did like it was still like oh wow like she's she's going through it and like Rowan with the word marks and everything I was like I love Rowan but it wasn't everything I had anticipated if that makes sense I literally just got out of the gym but I had to share this so there were three times that I'm walking on the treadmill reading the book and my eyes are watering and I'm having to like tilt my head back so that I don't just start crying in the gym <sighs> okay Fenris and the blood oath with Aelin I figured that was gonna happen but it still made me like tear up and it was just like Oh, I love him. I love him so much. And then Dorian and Caltaine. Dorian kneeling in front of Caltaine and being like, I am so sorry. Like, I failed you. I, that was a lot. And then after that conversation where Dorian's like asking himself, what do you want to be? And he's just like, I want to be like worthy enough for my friends. I want to be happy. I was just like, Someone hug him, please. Can I hold you? That shit took me out. I did not know how to act. Um, and then follow that all up with two months, three days, seven hours. I love him. I quite literally cannot get enough of him. Uh, and the way that he killed Karen. <sighs> this is so good. Here is Troy for the puppy tax. I won't be able to read much at work today, but the last thing that I read was with the little folk and like them getting on this boat and going and Aelin struggling with like trying to figure out if this is real or not. It's just like, it hurts so bad. And I just, this girl's been through the freaking ringer and we're just getting started. Like send help. I just had sunglasses on, so I still have the marks, but- Oh, the car's on. Okay, hold on, I'll turn it off. A couple things. Number one, um, them exchanging rings was like- <laughs> I needed that. I really needed that. And, um, who was gonna tell me? Who was gonna tell me? In the audiobook, it's pronounced Borte. I was calling her Bort. I'm still gonna keep calling her Bort because Borte? Who? No, no. Also, Kale's dad, I don't know if I'm talking loud, I'm sorry. Also, Kale's dad being like, yeah, your wife's pregnant, how did you not know? I'm still upset that she's pregnant because I just feel like, really? That's where we're going with them? Okay, like whatever, I'm just vibing here. Um. But I have a prediction for what I think is going to happen. Okay. I'm on chapter like 42. I think that it's either going to be Dorian or Aelin that, you know, sacrifices himself. And then basically what happened with the healers with Kale, where they like brought him back and they were like, oh, but your life is tied to this person's. I wonder if there's a way for Rowan to do that and like bring back Aelin and their lives are just tied together after that. Or I think somebody's going to die and then be brought back. I, I, I think that's what it is. I really hope that like a character doesn't like die like permanently. Obviously it could happen because there's a lot of them. But I feel like since everybody's coupled up, it's kind of messed up to be like, yeah, you're the only one whose significant other is going to die. Oh my god, I say that and now I'm like, someone's going to die. It has to happen. Like, it's fantasy. It's the finale in a fantasy book. Okay, Rowan saying to Aelin, if the cost truly is your life, we'll pay it together. I love him so, so much. But he's just like... He might be my favorite SJM man. I'm so, so sorry to Cassian, but I just, I love him. And then her being like, I'm ready to be kissed again, Prince. Oh, let me move this. Oh, no. 
I'm ready to be kissed again, Prince. I said, okay, okay. I love it. I love it. Like, they're so perfect together. I'm, I'm having a great time right now. I'm waiting to not be having a good time because I feel like there's going to be a point in time where I'm just like sobbing, ugly crying. But we're not there yet. I'm vibing. Um, Kale and Nazrin and all of them are still in Aniel, which, what kind of side quest is that? I don't, I didn't see it going there. I thought that Kale and Nazrin were going to start heading over to where Adian is and like, well, I'm sure they'll do that at some point. There's still like 80 chapters left. I'm still in love with Lorcan. I love Lorcan. Fenris has my whole heart. Um, he was in his wolf form to like a chapter ago. I really like him. I like his character a lot. And he basically told Lorcan like, after all this is over, we're gonna we're gonna fight. And I'm excited. I wonder if that actually happens though, or if they're just like, oh, you're good. I just have to say this really quickly because I should have like. I thought this, but I didn't like record it. But I was like, okay, Maeve really had Rowan, Fenris, Gavriel, Lorcan, all blood oath sworn to her. And so Aelin now has Rowan and she had Fenris. So I was like, is Lorcan gonna join? And now that she presented Lorcan with like, basically you swear the blood oath to me or we leave you right here. I don't really love that. And then I think Gavriel is not far behind him. I think that just everybody that was blood sworn to Maeve is now just going to be sworn to Aelin. And I feel, I feel like she's going to use it at a time when it's like, they're going to try to step in and save her and she's going to like make them not. That would be so good. Okay, I really hope that that delivers. I don't really love that like the chapter with Kale and Irene left off with them being like battle's about to start cut to Rowan and Aelin for a while and then when it cuts back to Kale and Irene it doesn't pick up where they left off it's like a couple days later eh, not a huge fan um Irene being pregnant in the middle of war why like what is that adding to the story maybe it'll make sense later but what is that adding um on top of that Kale, I love the story that he's had so far. I am a big Kale fan. Um, I just, I just love him. And I'm just nervous that something's going to happen to him. I don't know why, but I just have a feeling, a feeling. And then the chapter with Kale left off with them being like, him being like, oh, the last person I ever expected to come to the tent. Who is it? Because then it cuts to somebody else's point of view. So we shall wait. Adian using Aelin's dad's shield. My heart, my heart can't take this. That's the dishwasher that you're hearing, by the way. So, so sorry. Am I wrong for absolutely loving the ice melting, the soldiers falling in and then freezing it back over? That's so good. Like that is so good. And I feel like I'm sick in the head for loving that, but I loved every second of that. I can't remember if I ever said this, but Adian calling Lysandra useless? Sir, I thought that was your boo thing. Like, I thought you guys were together like that, but no, useless. And now because she's like, basically like when the Vald were like going down the middle and they're like, uh-oh, you know, everyone's leaving because they're a bunch of scaredy cats. Lysandra, Lysandra's like, I know what I need to do. What, what? Because it was like, it, it first says, useless, Adian had called her. She now knew what she needed to do. Is she gonna, okay, wait, is she gonna like turn back into Aelin and like sacrifice herself or like let them take her? Okay, let me read. I called it. I freaking called it. I knew, I knew she was gonna turn into Aelin, but I hope she doesn't die now. Okay, wait, let me keep reading. Now he's saying like he took it back. He didn't really mean it. This is all internal, not saying it to her, but he took it back. And then he's also saying like he'd make any bargain. He'd sell his soul to the dark God for them to spare her. That would have been really helpful like 20 minutes ago. Okay. These, like this tower and like this whole thing with the yielding and the witch just like diving right in, exploding, literally exploding. 
and then like all the the soldiers are just gone dust okay thanos okay like what also i don't really know how to feel about adian because yes he told her she was useless and then like threw her out in the cold while she was naked um don't love that but then he's like the second she's in danger he's like willing to throw himself over her to protect her pick a lane like to the side so i am reading on my kindle and i don't i own the physical books i just haven't looked at them like the um maps and so i didn't realize i feel like if i looked at the map i would have known who was gonna come into kale's tent but hello aelin rowan and the whole gang they're about to mess this army up i'm excited i was not expecting to get this emotional about the reunion between kale and aelin and aelin and irene like oh my god okay aelin finding out that Maeve is vog um i think because aelin was like oh i think that she basically was gonna use me to protect her blah 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 i think because the only other person that has fire is that girl that i don't remember her name isar um i do remember her name apparently um but that she was like oh sometimes i'm asked to and then she cut herself off i think she's gonna be important later because she's the only other person that has fire and then when aelin is like breaking down like i can't do this like you know i thought it was just erewhon and now it's erewhon and Maeve. this is too much and rowan being like you do not face this alone i love him so much and then the whole thing with elite and morgan and her being like i want to understand like how you could be in love with the monster because like i want to understand myself blah, blah blah she's in love with lorcan but then turn around and say i don't care if you come off that battlefield tomorrow you dirty liar and then gavriel had the same questions i had of like why hasn't she offered him the blood oath and it's because she hasn't offered it to Adian yet. And that just, I forgot that he wanted it. And now I'm like, literally everybody's sworn it before him except his dad. So she's about to have five Fae, like blood sworn to her, which would be pretty badass. And as he was like, why didn't she offer it to me? I was like, someone hug Gabriel for me, please. Hello again, my bestie. So. Right now, I am sitting down to read. I have my Kindle. That's my dog coming into the room, if you can hear his little chain dangling. I have my Kindle and my cup of coffee. I, I'm starting to get a little nervous, honestly. We're about to get to where part two starts, and I feel like part one's gonna end in a very like, <gasps> like a big gasp moment. But then I can just keep reading to part two. So I'm nervous. I'm excited. I should probably just get right into it. I think I'm procrastinating just a little bit because I'm quite nervous. But I'm all bundled up. I got my cute little good vibes hoodie on. I want to get some Throne of Glass merch. Like I want to get like a crew neck or a shirt or something. I did buy a sticker pack. And I'm gonna change out, not all of these. I think I'm just gonna add them to this because I already have Rowan on there. But I'm super excited for that. I just don't want the series to end. And I just don't know what I'm gonna do with myself when it's over. I guess start Crescent City, but still like, what am I gonna do? I will say this really quickly before I get started. The SJM men in this book stay on their knees. Like, Rowan will kneel in front of Aelin. Lorcan was, like, kneeling. I don't know. Yeah, Lorcan also kneeled in front of Aelin. But now, Adian is, like, kneeling in front of Lysandra. Kale was, like, I will crawl. I'll kneel in front of Irene. Like, I'm kind of living for it. Every time they're, like, oh, he, like, knelt before her. Okay, okay, I'm eating it up. Adian being stripped of his title is so disrespectful. Like, who do you think you are, Darrow? He was just so quick to just be like, here, have it. He is just so beat down right now and I don't blame him, but it just hurts my heart a little bit. I can't wait. I can't wait till he sees Aelin again because I just know that that's gonna be like 
it's gonna be everything. So I've switched back over, not back over, I guess, but I've switched over to the physical book. And it's only because now I'm like almost halfway through. So the book sits open very nicely. She's very floopy. So a couple things. We're addressing the fact that Rowan and Aelin are related because in my head when it was like, oh, Maeve was like not their actual sister, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, so that means they're not related. No. We're addressing here that Aelin is basically closer related to Elide or Kale than she is to Rowan, despite their distant ancestry, which I don't understand why she's not saying that she's closer related to Dorian, because she has to be related to Dorian if they could both be sacrificed for this lock. Rowan's own heritage connecting him to Mora's bloodline had been to the point of being in name only. So they're trying to remind us like, hey, they're related, but not like that. Like they're just related in the sense that like they're technically cousins, but basically not. I'm still a little confused by that. Um, but why is no one addressing? Because it could be her or Dorian that sacrifices himself. So they're, they have to be related. And she kissed him too. Aelin's just out here kissing her cousins. Dorian complaining about like when he shifts into being a woman and is like, man, these breasts are really cumbersome. It's just so funny to me. Okay, so Manon fighting all three of the High Witches. Badass. Love her. And then her grandmother fleeing. Are you joking? She couldn't take it. I wanted Astrid to get her so bad. Like I wanted that and I feel like I'll get it later, but I wanted that so bad. And then I hailed the Manon Crocken, cause it's not Croatian apparently, Manon Crocken, Queen of Witches. Oh. <laughs> Mass is just so good. I just love, oh my gosh. I, there's so much left. I love this book. I love these characters, all the emotions I'm feeling. This is just top tier. Rowan like wondering why Aelin won't just like burn the army and Fenris being like, they burned her. Like that's why she won't use her power. They literally burned her. Oh my God. What is happening with Lorcan right now? Like he's literally like, nobody cares if I come back. Like. He doesn't deserve a lead anyways. And then now he's like, oh no, I really want to fight them. Like, I don't want to keep my shield up. Dude. The lead being like, where's Lorcan? Where is Lorcan? <gasps> What's about to happen? And then also Fenris and he's like, I can't. I think his power was tied to his brother. And because his brother's not alive, he can't do that anymore maybe i obviously could be wrong but that's just what i'm thinking or he just can't use it yet because of like the same reason that aelin can't use it yet like it's just too traumatic and i'm sorry but this like wave of water is going to be coming at them can't she just fire you know no missed no i'll i'll figure out what happens i guess Aline, like looking for Lorcan and then being like, I promise to always find you. I am so unwell. Like, I am so unwell right now. Why is Lorcan doing this to me right now? Like, this shouldn't be allowed to happen. A couple things. Number one, Dorian and Maeve. What's that? What is that? I don't understand the logic behind like, oh, I'll give you Adderlin. Like you can marry me and like take over Adderlin. <sighs> That's really stressing me out. Um, Nezrin just flew over the Farian Gap. Nobody's there. I feel like the witches that were in the Farian Gap have like flown to go find Manon. I am really, really looking forward to the reunion between Dorian and Kale. Like that's just something that I need. I mean, how could you not? I also am looking forward to Adian taking the blood oath. It's just, it feels like it's about to end in that, like, I feel like the battle's about to get started, but also there's still so much of the book left. I feel like there's like 
300 pages left. Also really fast, can we talk about the fact that how does Erewhon not recognize Dorian playing as Vernon? Because he lived in the castle with Dorian for years, right? Like Parrington knew Dorian his whole life. So how does Erewhon not, not recognize Dorian? That doesn't make sense. And I just don't know how to feel about Maeve. Like, there's no way that Maeve is all of a sudden, like, the good guy. Th that can't happen. Maeve shifting into Aelin and Manon to try to seduce Erewhon. What's that about? That is gross. Dorian had me really worried for a second there. I was like, what? What is his plan? What is he doing? Because it's just not making sense. But then hitting her with, only one witch will be my queen. <sighs> I love him. Adian saying, I lost my family 10 years ago and tomorrow I'm gonna fight for the new one I've made. Oh my gosh. I love him. I love him so much. I take back everything I said earlier. I love him. I just want to see him happy. I want at the end of the book for like him and Lysandra and Evangeline to just be like a cute little family. He can't die. He can't die. What did, what did he want to die? Somebody has to die. I feel like they can't all just make it out alive. Unless, I mean, they could, that would be great. But will they? Adian saying, if I don't die tomorrow, may I kiss you when the day is done. I love him. I love him so much. I can't, I can't get it up. Like, my heart, my heart. If you can hear the dishwasher, I am so sorry. I think I forgot to say this earlier. So they keep saying, oh, Adian and Aelin are basically like twins. Oh, they're like twins. They're so similar. They're like brother and sister. They have to be related. I mean, we still got enough that could be revealed. I feel like they have to be related more so than just being cousins, only because they keep saying, oh, do you guys look like siblings? You guys look like brother and sister. Oh, they act the same. They might as well be twins. Hello? I really hope that they are because I've had this thought since like, early 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 when Adian was even introduced so I am I've been holding out hope for this one why would they say it so much if it's not important that's my question like why keep saying it over and over again so Lorcan did yes he did yes he did prediction time um Iskra and Manon like Iskra's bull on Abraxos and I'm like very nervous but I don't think Abraxos is gonna die I think Astrin is gonna like come in to save her and then Astrin's gonna die or Astrin's mount is gonna die which I wouldn't care about as much but oh my god okay I am unwell I keep seeing oh I keep seeing people post like live Manon live not like understanding the reference just like makes it hurt like why did you guys do that? Oh my god. What what am I supposed to do now? Like what do I do with my life now? The 13 Oh my god. I was not expecting the 13 to do that. Like, I get it, it was kind of necessary, but also like that was really fucking rude SJM. Like, it's one thing, it's one thing for it to just be Astrin, but it's another for literally like her entire like little family. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, how is that fair? How is that fair? Kale running to Dorian. Is is this gonna get any better emotionally? Like, please send help because like Kale running to Dorian is like the moment I've been waiting for. Now that I've gotten myself together, just barely, um, 
so I have a theory. I could be completely wrong, but there keeps being mentions of Aelin like fire in her hand and then she touches the sword, the hilt of the sword. And I feel like I'm probably crazy. I feel like she's charging the sword somehow. And the sword is going to be what helps her deliver this like death blow to either Maeve or Erwin. But it just feels like, it, okay, hold on. Let me, let me pull up my receipts. It says, flame danced at Aelin's fingertips as she rested her hand atop Goldrin. The fire seemed to sink into the blade, the ruby flickering. So I feel like because we know the ruby, didn't they say that the ruby was like the eye of that month? I just feel like it's charging somehow. I could be so, so wrong, but that's like the third or fourth time that they've said that that feels significant. Let me find another way. I love Rowan. I love Rowan so, so much. There has to be a way for like it to be like half and half. Like, does that sound stupid? Like Dorian and Aelin do it together. Neither one of them dies. There has to be a loophole. There's no way that Dorian or Aelin dies. This goodbye between Rowan and Aelin, where he's like, I'm with you. <sighs> oh my gosh. He said, come back to me. Like, this isn't fair. It's not fair. Her name is Aelin Asherberg Alathinius, and she will not be afraid. Oh, I can't, but I am a little upset that she didn't say my name is Aelin Ashriver Whitethorn Galathinius or Galathinius Whitethorn or whatever it is, but she did not put Whitethorn in there. Why? Like, it's never ending. Like, there is, there is no point where I'm like, oh, we're just having a nice time. I don't think there's going to be a nice time the rest of this book. Sorry, are we still ignoring the fact that Dorian's, like, got the same blood as her? And they were kissing in the, in the first book? Nobody? Nobody. He tattooed a map back to him. Are, are you kidding? He tattooed the map in word marks back home? I absolutely hate, hate the giving up your powers trope. Gross. Never, never, ever, ever. I'm not a fan. She gave up her human form, but like had zero power, nothing. So now what? Now she's alive, but like we have a war that's still happening. I really quick wanted to address who she saw when she was like falling through the world. I don't want to spoil anything in other series for other people, like different books. But if you know what I'm talking about, that was kind of exciting. Left off where Aelin had just shown up on like the stag, like whatever it's called, the... King of the North? Is that what it's called? The stag with the fire. You know, you know what I'm talking about. She showed up with that and like everybody showed up. All hell's about to break loose. I have a feeling that somebody important's going to die and I just for some reason feel like it's going to be Adian. And I hope it isn't. But I have a, a feeling. I'm so nervous. I have like 15% left. I don't want it to be over. Like, I'm procrastinating finishing it for sure. I have about 100 pages left. A little bit more than 100 pages. I'm really nervous. So, like, the last thing that happened was Aelin and her entire gang, except for, obviously, Adian and Lysandra. They're all over there, but Aelin and her crew pull up and they're like, don't worry, guys, we got this. I really hope that not all her power is gone because I'd be lame. But... We'll see. It's gonna break my heart, isn't it? Gabriel did not have to do that. What in the Avengers Endgame is happening? Like, I was not expecting them to just be like, oh, all these portals are open. And here is a whole other army. So they waited till the last freaking minute, if you ask me. But, and then Lorcan, when Lorcan was like being taken over by Maeve, and he's looking at a lead and he says, 
I think you're my mate. Ah! Oh my god! A couple thoughts. Gavriel, first of all, how dare you, SJM? That was rude. Second, I kept saying, like in the podcast episodes, I kept saying, I think that somebody's gonna give up their immortality for somebody else because they keep mentioning that it's a thing, that somebody did it before. So I wasn't surprised when Lorcan was like, I'm gonna give up my immortality. Okay, like cool, love to see it. That final battle was stressful, but also I feel like was very, very drawn out. It was a lot. So by the time I got to the end of it, I was like, thank God, that was a lot. Oh my gosh, okay, so Aelin's coronation and her offering the blood oath to Adian in front of everybody. Very cute moment. However, super specific, but in Queen of Shadows, there was like the dance instructor that was like, wherever you go, I'll bring you music and dancing and blah, blah, blah. And like all the arts and stuff, the arts are so important. Rowan kind of touches on it, but it's never followed through on where at the coronation, the dance teacher is there. Or like at some point later on, the dance teacher shows up. Just a little thing. Also, I could have sworn Adian was gonna shift. I feel like that was a missed opportunity. And I also, also feel like it was left in a place where there could totally be another book. They could totally have another book and it's just, here we go again. It just feels like it left off in a place where like we don't really know what's going on with Dorian and Kale and Irene or I think my french fries are almost ready. It's going on with like Dorian and Kale and Irene or Manon and like uh, they say that the Kraken, not Croshan apparently, the Kraken witches can have mates but never touch on whether her and Dorian are mates. Come on. So it was, it was a great book. I loved it, I cried. But I just feel like there was a lot of loose ends that I was waiting to be like tied up. Also, I kept saying Fleetfoot is useless. Fleetfoot is useless. I was expecting halfway through the battle Fleetfoot comes out and is like, actually, I'm just like a shapeshifter. And that probably sounds so crazy. I thought Fleetfoot was gonna be like magical somehow, but Fleetfoot was so unimportant, so insignificant. I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. There's gonna be a podcast episode about it, so you'll be able to hear all my feelings. I am very emotionally attached to these characters, to this world, and I will be rereading very, very soon because I read it all on my Kindle. If you can hear my air fryer, that's my French fries cooking, but it, I read it all on my Kindle, except for this little chunk of Kingdom of Ash, and then I listened to the last couple pages because I could not wait till I got home. So I wanna go through and annotate all of them because I own, see they're right there. I own everything except Throne of Glass right now. That'll change soon. But I wanna go through and make sure that I annotate them and also anything I pick up on the second time, obviously. But I feel like when I annotate on my Kindle, I highlight things unnecessarily. So I'm very excited to reread it already. I can't believe it's over. I feel like I've been putting off reading this series for so long only because it was eight books, but no. Like it, it really didn't feel like eight books. You get what I'm saying. It didn't feel like eight books. It was such an amazing journey to go on. I'm so happy that I read this book, this series. Got to meet these characters. My heart is just so happy. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, comment your favorite Throne of Glass book because I really don't know which one it is for me. Because this one would be my favorite if she didn't give up her powers. Giving up the powers is like, mm. And I have a lot of issues because I was expecting a lot of things to be answered or for a lot of things to happen in this book that didn't happen. So honestly, right now, I think it would be Empire of Storms. Yeah, I think it would be Empire of Storms. I really liked it and I also loved, loved, loved Queen of Shadows. But between those two, I think Empire of Storms because that's when we find out that their lovey-doveyness is more than just lovey-doveyness. Okay, I will leave you alone with that. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.